Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners welcome to the unit 4 of the open economy and the lecture today is in continuation of the topic which we started in the previous lecture that was the mundial framing model in the previous lecture we had derived the i star and lm star curve that is the curves of the goods market and the money market in a small open economy and seen that how equilibrium is achieved in mundial framing model between the exchange rates and the level of income when both the goods market and the money market are in equilibrium today in this lecture we will be seeing that what is the impact of the exchange rate variation on the small open economy and thereafter we will examining the relationship between the various policy changes and the equilibrium so far we have understood that what is nominal exchange rates and what are real exchange rates today we will be getting introduced to a new concept of the floating and the fixed exchange rates these are these are basically the types of exchange rate systems which are adopted by the various countries of the world we'll see that what do we mean by floating and what do we mean by a fixed exchange rates in a floating exchange rate system as the name itself is indicating it is such that the rate of exchange is allowed to fluctuate in response to changing economic conditions if you see this di this definition that we have given what does it say it says in a system of floating exchange rates e what is e e is the exchange rate the e is allowed to fluctuate in response to the changing economic conditions that is if an economy allows its rate of exchange or its domestic currency with respect to foreign currency its rate to fluctuate or change if there are change in any economic conditions then such a rate of exchange is called as the floating rate of exchange or floating exchange rates by floating what do you mean by float floating means it keeps on moving from one point to another so these changes in exchange rates can happen due to various forces which you may be reading in the in subsequent uh, courses which you do later on these rate of exchange generally change because economic conditions changes and if it is uh, it is okay with the economy to allow its rate of exchange to change as per the economic conditions we will call it as a floating exchange rate in contrast to it the other rate of exchange system that we have is called as fixed exchange rates under the fixed exchange rates the central bank of the economy or of the country trades domestic for foreign currency at a predetermined price or in simple words what we are saying is that the central bank of the country does not allow its rate of exchange to fluctuate at at a pre announced or at a predetermined rate of exchange the domestic currency to the foreign currency is always traded at the same point you will not see any kind of a fluctuation a day to day fluctuation or a short term fluctuation in this kind of an exchange rate system so what is a fixed exchange rate that rate of exchange under which the central bank of the country allows its or it predetermines the rate at which the domestic currency will con converted into the foreign currency whereas in a floating exchange rate this rate of exchange is allowed to fluctuate if there are any changes in the economic conditions now why have we introduced these concepts is because when we understand the mundial framing model 
we will be seeing that how the policies of the government have an impact on the economic variables of a small open economy in case of floating rate of exchange and in case of a fixed exchange rate. So, we will be talking about the fiscal and the monetary policy and see that if the monetary and the fiscal policy changes are brought about in a floating rate of exchange, then what happens in the economy to the rate of exchange or to the total aggregate level of output? And if such a change in the policy is brought about in a fixed exchange rate system, then what repercussions or impact do we see on the rate of exchange and the level of aggregate output? So, I hope you understand that what is floating and what is a fixed exchange rate system. Just keep these definitions in mind because when we move forward, we will be seeing that they have a very different impact. Floating exchange and fixed exchange have a very different impact. The fiscal policy and monetary policy have a very different impact in case of both type of exchange rate systems. So, as we just said, that initially we will be starting with the floating exchange rate. So, the first policy that we are considering is the fiscal policy. And I am sure by now all my learners are very well aware of what is a fiscal policy. In order to understand that how fiscal policy in under a floating exchange rate system brings about a change in the rate of exchange and in the aggregate level of output, let us start with the first equation of the I A star curve which we derived in the previous lecture. So, what equation do you see learners? We say y is equal to c which is a function of c into y d means that the c is a function of the disposable income plus i and what is i? i is investment. What is investment dependent on? Investment is dependent on the r star. What is r star? r star we had seen in the previous lecture is the world market rate of interest plus G, G is the government expenditure plus net exports and net exports are dependent on what? They are a function of what? Of the equilibrium of the exchange rates. So, whenever we are talking about fiscal policy, we have seen that by fiscal policy we mean the change in the government expenditure or the tax rates. So, if we are saying there is a change in fiscal policy, this essentially means a fiscal policy will bring about a change in which equation? In the equation of the I A star curve because G and T are a part of this equation. This we have seen when we did your ISLM model for a closed economy as well. The second equation which is of interest to us is the LM star equation that is the money market equilibrium. So, we had seen in the last previous lecture that equilibrium in the money market is achieved where the demand of money becomes equal to the supply of money. So, in the equation that you are seeing right now, M by P is the money supply, real money supply and it is an equilibrium, it becomes equal to the demand of money. So, if demand of money is denoted by capital L, what is demand of money dependent on? Demand of money is dependent on the rate of interest and on the level of income. Again, I repeat, as R star is what? The world market rate of interest. In the Munjal Fleming model which we had started in the previous lecture, we had said the equilibrium is where Is becomes equal to Lm or in this case Is star becomes equal to your Lm star or the point where the goods market as well as money market are simultaneously in an equilibrium, we say the equilibrium in the economy is achieved. So, this graph that you see is where we are going to plot the Is star as well as the Lm star curve. And later on in this graph itself, we will be seeing the impact of the fiscal policy 
in case of a floating exchange rate. So as you can see in this graph, we have taken exchange rates on the y-axis and the aggregate level of output on the x-axis. You have this blue line which is downward sloping which is representing IS1 star means this is the line on which the goods market in this open economy is in equilibrium. And we have already discussed in detail in the previous lecture that why this IS1 star is showing a negative relationship between the rate of exchange and the aggregate level of output. The second curve which we are going to make is what? It is going to be the LM curve. What is LM curve? Again we are saying the equilibrium in the money market. The point where LM1 star is equal to IS1 star, this is the point where we get the equilibrium rate of exchange between in this small open economy. So in our diagram, it is represented by small e1. So the economy is in equilibrium and the rate of exchange is at e1 and the aggregate level of output in this economy is y1. And remember, this exchange rate is floating. Floating means we will allow this rate of exchange to vary or to change. It can go up or it can go down or in more technical terms, we can say that this rate of exchange can depreciate or this rate of exchange can or your currency or so this currency can show a depreciation or the currency can show an appreciation. So if the government of this particular small open economy decides to have a expansionary fiscal policy, that is it may decide to increase its government expenditure or it may decide to decrease its tax rates. So an expansionary fiscal policy, how does it have an impact on the exchange rates or on the domestic and the foreign currency, we will be seeing right now. An expansionary fiscal policy will lead the IS star curve, IS1 star curve to shift. We have already done in the previous lectures that this IS star curve will shift due to the fiscal policy. We are talking about, we are assuming or we are taking a situation of a fiscal expansion. That is, we are assuming that or we are taking a, a situation where the government has increased its either the expend, its expenditure or it has reduced its level of taxes. Therefore, we will see this I star 1 to shift outside or to shift to the right. So, this black arrow is showing that your IS curve is going to shift, IS star curve is going to shift. It shifts to a new line, it moves outward, it shifts outwards and the new IS star curve that we have is IS2 star. Since LM curve, LM1 star curve is not getting affected by this fiscal expansion, this LM curve will not move because this is this G and T are not going to have an impact on the demand of money therefore or supply of money. Therefore, LM curve is not going to shift. The shift is only going to be in the IS curve. What do we see learners? We see that the new equilibrium is achieved where IS2 star becomes equal to the initial money supply uh, uh, money market equilibrium curve LM1 star and this particular equilibrium is at a higher rate of exchange of E2 whereas the level of aggregate output is still the same. So going by this plain simple logic we are saying that increase in a fiscal expansion or a fiscal expansion is leading to a shift in IS curve money market curve remaining the same, we go to a situation where in this small open economy, the rate of exchange has gone up from E1 to E2 or your domestic currency has appreciated. But this particular argument that we are making is not very intuitive. Intuitively, if you ask as to why this has happened for that, 
we should understand that what are the economic forces which have taken place or what role have they played in getting this E1 to rise to E2 or Y1 to remain where it was. So to do that, let us again see that what has happened. You, well, the government went in for a fiscal expansion. A fiscal expansion increased the, you know, it shifted the IS curve, IS star 1 to IS star 2. We have seen in the previous lectures when we were talking about the ISLM model in a closed economy that when there is a fiscal expansion, it leads, of course, leads to an increase in aggregate output, but it also leads to an increase in the rate of interest. So this means that when the fiscal expansion took place in this economy, had it been a closed economy, we would have seen Y to increase, whereas your exchange or your rate of interest would have also increased. Now, since this is an open economy, an increase in the rate of interest due to the fiscal expansion would mean that the domestic rate of interest has become more than the world market rate of interest. What will this lead to? Because of this, foreign savers would get attracted to the small economy and start bringing their funds to get with them invested in this small economy. So with an increase in rate of interest, foreigners would be willing to come to this small economy and start making investments in their currency. So because of this what will happen is that they will bring foreign currency and in exchange of this foreign currency they would require domestic currency. So the demand for domestic currency will increase which would lead to an appreciation in the domestic currency rate or the domestic currency will become expensive compared to the foreign currency. An appreciation in the rate of exchange is shown by from E1 to E2. But the question now is that previously when we did the closed economy there, when rate of interest increased, but simultaneously we also saw an increase in income or output. But here we are not seeing that. We are seeing that Y1 remains Y1. There is no change in aggregate level of output. Why does this happen? Now, seeing from the other point of view, we have just understood that because foreign investors or foreign savers came to this domestic economy, they pushed up the rate of exchange of this domestic currency domestic currency became expensive or its value appreciated from E1 to E2. Now, when there is an appreciation in the domestic currency, this means that compared to the foreign goods, domestic goods have become expensive and foreign goods have become cheaper. With an increase, because domestic goods have become expensive, of course, the exports therefore will decline. Because what we are selling has become expensive to what foreigners are buying for in their country is selling at. So if foreign goods are cheaper than domestic goods, automatically the demand for domestic goods in the foreign market will reduce. So our exports will reduce. And imports may increase because imported goods are cheaper. Because of this, the net exports will change. This figure the net exports. Why? Because this IS also has a component of net exports. And net exports we have seen are dependent on the rate of exchange. So this rate of exchange is appreciated. This appreciation in rate of exchange will have an impact on the net exports. Why? Because with an appreciated currency, domestic currency, exports become expensive, imports become cheaper. So exports reduce, imports increase we see change in your trade balance. So because of this, the benefit which we saw by a fiscal expansion on the aggregate output, it gets nullified. So why one remains at the same position? So what is the result of the fiscal expansion? 
in case of a small open economy. We see that when a fiscal expansion takes place in a small open economy, the rate of exchange increases or it becomes high. It is great. The change in rate of exchange is greater than zero or exchange rate appreciates for the domestic currency whereas there is no change in Y. I, we have just explained this. Now again we will review whatever we have said. We have said that it's a, because it's a small open economy, there is a perfect capital mobility as we saw with an expansionary fiscal policy with an increase in the rate of interest. It attracted foreign savers to come and invest in this domestic country. Therefore, we saw domestic currency becoming expensive compared to foreign currency. So, because of this perfect capital mobility, that net exports changed and GL GDP could not. So, in the expansionary fiscal policy in the closed economy, we had talked about the concept of crowding out. What was crowding out? Crowding out basically said that when an expansionary fiscal policy takes place, it leads to an increase in the rate of interest along with the change increase in aggregate output. But that increase in the rate of in interest reduces the level of investment in the economy because investment now becomes expensive. So this crowding out which we talked about in context of the closed economy is also can also be explained in context of an open economy. As we just said, in a closed economy, the fiscal policy crowds out investment. Why? Because interest rates have risen. Whereas, in case of a small open economy, a fiscal policy crowds out net exports. How? By causing the exchange rate to appreciate. As we've just seen that because interest rate went up, Foreign investors started coming in the small open economy and started investing. They brought in their currency and wanted to exchange their currency for this domestic currency. Therefore, the domestic currency became expensive, became dearer as compared to the foreign currency. So, the exchange rate for the domestic currency appreciated. An appreciated exchange rate had its impact on the exports as well as the imports of this economy because with an appreciated exchange rate, exports became expensive. So, people did not prefer buying it from the small economy. So, exports reduced. Whereas, imports increased because imported goods were cheaper in comparison to the domestic goods. So, the net exports did not let your Y to increase the change in the net exports that is the decline in the exports matched by higher imports did not let your Y to increase. So that is why we are saying in case of a small open economy it the fiscal policy crowds out net exports that is it reduces net exports because of the increase in the or appreciation in the rate of exchange. So, crowding out in closed economy happened to the investment because of the rise in the rate of interest whereas in an open economy it happened because of the change in the rate of exchange its impact on the net exports. Now, after this let us go to the monetary policy and the floating exchange rate. Again, we will take the IS star equation and the LM star equation. Going again with the similar graph, we see your IS curve to be downward sloping and LM to be vertical shown by IS 1 star and LM 1 star. Equilibrium is at a point of E1 exchange rate, Y is the aggregate level of output. If we are going, if the central bank of the country decides to have an expansionary monetary policy or it intends to increase the money supply learners give it a thought which curve will change the curve which will change is the which one it will be the lm curve so you see with an increase in money supply you will see your lm star curve to shift to the right 
So you get a new curve from LM1 star to LM2 star. So instead of this blue line that we have which is representing the initial money supply curve or equal to the money demand that is the money market equilibrium curve because of an expansionary monetary policy we see the curve shifting to the right. Since it is a floating exchange rate what will happen is that in order to maintain the equilibrium between the goods market and the money market either Y should increase or the rate of exchange should depreciate or it should decrease or it can be a mix of both. So here what you see is that your E1 depreciates to E2 and output increases from Y1 to Y2. Now this particular situation will is meaning that we are seeing that the rate of exchange is depreciating or it is less than 0 but here we also see a change in the level of income or aggregate output which is a positive change. Now why does this happen again is a question. Now when the monetary supply increases, money supply increases through an expansionary monetary policy, what happens is that the rate of interest in the economy will fall down because money supply has increased. So a decline in the rate of interest would mean that now people instead foreigners coming to this country and investing it will be this domestic residents of this country who will take money outside of this country and invest in the foreign countries because the rate of interest has declined. So they will find it profitable to go and invest in another country because it is an open economy. This would lead to a capital outflow. Also, the domestic currency, your domestic currency would not be in demand here because people are taking foreign currency instead of the domestic currency. Because of that, you see a depreciation in the rate of exchange shown by E1 to E2. Your domestic currency is depreciated. Now, a de depreciating domestic currency in the goods market would mean that your exports have become cheaper and imports have become expensive. So net exports will now be positive because exports will increase and imports will decrease. Net exports increase or the change in exports will lead to a change in the aggregate output. It will increase your aggregate output from Y1 to Y2. So, if we want to see that what lessons we learn from the monetary policy, what do we see? We see that monetary policy affects output by affecting one or more of the components of aggregate demand. That is monetary policy has not only having an impact on the money supply and the rate of interest but also on those components which composes aggregate demand. Let us now compare how it happens in a closed economy and how it happens in an open economy. In a closed economy, if we have an expansionary monetary policy, as you can see in this red, when money supply increases, this leads to a fall in the rate of interest. A fall in the rate of interest means investments will increase because investment, the cost of making investments have reduced. An increase in investment which is a part of the aggregate demand this will lead to an increase in the aggregate level of output. So increase in M leads to decline in R. This leads to an increase in investment which increases the aggregate level of output. This happens in a closed economy. In case of a small open economy if a similar monetary expansion takes place what happens is with an increase in your money supply, interest rate of course falls but also the exchange rate depreciates. We have just understood that why exchange rate depreciates because with the fall in the rate of interest there will be a capital outflow, net capital outflow will take place. So your exchange rates will depreciate, domestic currency will depreciate, a depreciation in the domestic currency would mean net exports will increase because exports have become cheaper 
Now, domestic goods have become cheaper compared to the foreign goods. So, the demand for domestic goods will increase. So, NX which is also a part of aggregate demand will push up your aggregate level of output. So, but one thing that we have to understand here learners is that expansionary monetary policy does not raise the world aggregate demand. The world aggregate demand is the same. It is only the shift is from foreign goods demand to the domestic goods demand. So, overall aggregate output in the world economy will remain the same, but there is just going to be a shift from foreign goods to the domestic goods. Therefore, we are saying increase in income and employment at home is being made at the expense of losses abroad. Because your exports become cheaper compared to imported goods, in this small open economy, there is an increase in Y which will of course lead to an increase in employment. But this increase in income and employment in this domestic economy is at the cost or as the expense of the loss of income and loss of employment abroad. So that is the difference between the monetary policy in the closed economy and in the open economy. In the next part of the lecture, we will be talking about the impact of these policies if the country is having a fixed exchange rate system. So we will meet you in the next lecture. Thank you.